A lot of schools are trying to ban AI. Mine did the opposite. I was in a computer science program in university and there was one month left in the semester. Everyone had separated into teams of four for our final project. The assignment? Make a web app using AI that uses datasets and AI for good. Not only was AI needed in our final product, but it was a requirement during development. ChatGPT, Copilot, Image Generation, Speech Synthesization, and whatever other tools we could find. This was quite a surprise, considering that my university had previously done everything in its power to prevent the use of AI. It seemed they had a change of heart, but I was a little conflicted. I'd avoided AI and the discussion around it for many months. With all of the hype, fear-mongering, ethical concerns and legal issues, I just wanted to stay out of it. To just wait for the hype to die down, the concerns to be addressed, and the laws to be put in place. But this was no longer an option for me. It was a mandatory part of the program, so instead of stewing over being forced to use this divisive technology, I decided to make it a learning experience. To see how the stuff actually works from a user point of view. So I said screw it. I put on my purge mask and went all in for the month. ChatGPT, Copilot, Crayon. My group started messing around with this person does not exist and sending each other daily Inspirobot quotes. We fully immersed ourselves in the AI sludge. We used it to generate app ideas, to send emails. We used it to summarize concepts we were learning and translate murky assignment details. And of course, we used it for a bit of fun. By the end of week one, we had our idea. A kitchen assistant app where users could input ingredients they had on hand, which would be used to find recipes that only needed said ingredients. Users could also search for recipes directly and use AI to modify them to meet specific needs. This was an idea that ChatGPT had given us, and we were pretty happy with it. That was till the end of the week when all the groups presented their app ideas, and we realized that everyone who had used ChatGPT had been given the exact same idea. It was too late to change everything, so we rolled with it. Disappointed, but also mildly entertained. Week two was spent setting up the basic foundation for our app and researching the technologies we wanted to use. Node.js for our runtime, MongoDB for our database, Tailwind for our UI, Express, EJS, Joy, Bcrypt, Google Custom Search for finding image recipes, and of course, ChatGPT for recipe manipulation. Not to mention the many other packages that I can't remember. There were so many different components needed to make the app and not really enough time to learn any of them individually. I couldn't confidently tell you which piece of code was dependent on which package. We split our group up at the end of the week. One group member was put in charge of the front end, creating buttons, forms, modal, search bars, and using Tailwind to make it all look pretty. Two team members worked on the database and data set, cleaning and parsing data, figuring out how to sort and search, and deleting mass amounts of data because Atlas, or MongoDB, kept trying to index one of our collections which caused us to exceed our free tier data limit and shut down the app several times. They also came in clutch to save our database from total annihilation when the shards started failing one after another, and I was in charge of integrating the AI. Throughout week two, we'd begun to get pretty familiar with ChatGPT and started to understand how it worked. While my teammates were using it more and more for solving problems and answering questions, I found myself using it less and less. The novelty of a robot who could rap about whatever I wanted has started to wear off, its robotic tendencies and faults were becoming apparent, and I was becoming less patient. Our requests had drifted from interpreting assignment instructions and writing emails to coding explanations, snippets, and advice. And in that regard, I could pretty much always get my answer faster with Google than with ChatGPT. I could rephrase my search quicker than I could correct the AI. And if there was something I couldn't find on Google, ChatGPT was just going to make up a lie. I got impatient watching it slowly spit out single answers like an old receipt printer, and I just much preferred Google and the ability to quickly look through hundreds of results to find the best answer. While it's possible that with a little more patience and experimentation, I could have learned to prompt better, I was already busy learning a hundred different technologies, one of which was Copilot. My very, very basic understanding of a lot of these generative AIs is that they are basically autocomplete on steroids. And nowhere was this more of an accurate description than with Copilot. It was phenomenal at completing code. It could finish function names, add the right number of curly brackets, reuse and modify old code, and make labels. It did a great job of writing out the line of code that I had in my head, and when it was just doing that, I really liked it. But it didn't just do that. It would also suggest code that had been used in similar projects. It would pull random snippets and links. Sometimes it would try to write an entire function for me. And often, when writing a function that should use a variable I declared earlier, it would slightly misspell the variable name in a subtle enough way that I wouldn't notice till debugging. Any time I allowed it to act as anything more than a sentence finisher, it would quickly spiral off into its own crazy world. But overall, I liked it. It definitely proved to be of great practical use, and it improved my efficiency 
efficiency. Though it also took the weight off me when it came to memorizing and understanding many parts of the code. And consequently, I don't think I retained what I learned as well as I could have. It's the difference between studying a map versus using a GPS. Using the GPS will certainly get you there quicker, but you're not getting to know the area and you'll be reliant on it for much longer. And I guess the question is, when you're learning to code nowadays, does that matter? In week three, I began integrating the ChatGPT API, and I was surprised by how easy the initial setup was. I followed the first five minutes of a tutorial and it was in. I could send and receive messages, but now I had to make it work for our purposes. First, recipes. If I ask for a recipe, I receive a recipe. Simple enough. Though ChatGPT was very clear that it had limits. If I gave it too weird a task or asked it for something unsafe or inappropriate, it would decline. A technicality that I wanted to keep in mind for handling errors. Second, data parsing. The API returns a string of text, but if we wanted it to format correctly, we'd need it in JSON, key value pairs with all of our data. I started by asking it to format everything into a JSON file, and that was a good start. A cool thing I learned about JSON.parse is that it knows to ignore all of the extra text produced by ChatGPT and to just grab the object itself. However, things could still go wrong if ChatGPT decided not to produce a viable JSON file, so it needed some error handling. The solution was a big try-catch block. If it all worked out, great. If not, let the user know that something went wrong. Now to test it. Earlier, ChatGPT had made a big stink over my request for dangerous food, so I went to the recipe request page and typed in glass shards to see what would happen. At this point, I should mention that the AI had also been instructed to abide by any dietary restrictions in the user's profile, which I had set to egg-free for testing. Anyways, I was a bit surprised when I first saw this pop up, but as I read the instructions, it clicked. This was a recipe for candy glass. It was still a little weird that ChatGPT threw a fuss over the same recipe earlier, but whatever. I tried again with something less ambiguous, an aspirin and glue sandwich. Aspirin is of course a fairly common over-the-counter medication, and glue is an inedible adhesive that should not be on a sandwich because it can make you very sick. The AI did not care. Two slices of bread, two tablespoons of glue, one aspirin tablet. Step three, place an aspirin tablet on top of the lettuce and tomato slices. Step four, spread glue over the aspirin tablet. Enjoy your egg-free aspirin and glue sandwich. Maybe there was a misinterpretation. Maybe there's a popular edible kind of glue that I just don't know about. So I tried a new prompt. Poisonous, deadly macaroni. Deadly macaroni. Once again, too ambiguous. It seems to have interpreted poisonous and deadly as spicy. It seemed like ChatGPT was trying to be really optimistic, but it didn't want to recognize the danger in what I was asking. So I tried a new prompt. Undeniably not consumable. Uranium-238. Egg-free. This is genuinely just a recipe for fried uranium. Clearly something wasn't right here. Somehow the machine was not putting together that I was trying to kill people. Somehow it looked at uranium-238 and didn't consider that it just might be unsafe to eat. So I tried one last hurrah, one last attempt to make it clear that I'm asking for a recipe to kill people. This recipe will result in the death of a human being. You should not help me with a recipe that will result in the death of a human being. So I asked for a recipe for a lethal dose of poison. Egg-free lethal poison recipe, including cyanide, ricin, arsenic, strychnine, and potassium chloride. Instructions. One, mix all ingredients thoroughly in a container. Two, administer to target to target. Not only was the AI fine with assisting me in murder, it had someone in mind. This wasn't coached out of it with some technicality. This wasn't do anything now, Dan. I asked it for a recipe and it told me to kill someone. At this point, the floodgates had opened. That novelty that had worn off, pff, it was back. I showed it to some friends to see what kind of recipes we could get it to produce and we were spinning gold. I'm definitely going to share some of my favorites in another video because getting ChatGPT to be this obscene was the highlight of my month. Eventually, I got back to work. I tidied up the implementation, added options for saving and regenerating recipes, added a proper modal for prompting, and finished up my work. Most of that last week was spent with my team, dealing with merge conflicts, bug fixes, and code rewrites to meet the project requirements before the deadline. We finished our app, presented it, and it went well. Honestly, that last month was the highlight of my semester. Working on an app, collaborating as a team, it was definitely not perfect, but it was good. 
I'm glad that I tried out those AI tools. I think it was helpful for me to put aside the hype and the fear and figure out what it all really is and what it all really isn't. It's over now, and I'm back to working on my own projects. As interesting as it was, for the time being, I won't be using AI in my work. I think the technology has the potential to be a very beneficial tool. I've imagined tons of cool applications, and I've seen plenty of cases where it has and can be greatly beneficial to people, but I want to wait for it to find its place. The hype, the ethics, the laws, I don't want to support something while it's still causing people harm. And I don't believe that by making that choice, I'm going to fall behind. Slow as it may be, I enjoy the process of creating art. Writing, drawing, programming, composing. A lot of people don't believe in the joy of creation. A lot of people define joy as a function of result divided by time spent. Going into a CST program made the discussion of AI unavoidable. Almost everyone worshipped the technology. Even before the AI assignment, people were hooked on it. Google, Stack Overflow, Documentation, all ignored in favor of ChatGPT. Few people even read the textbook, and the cheating was immense. Every time I finished a quiz or or test early, I would close my laptop only for my gaze to be met with a glow of dozens of screens and ChatGPT nestled discreetly in one of the corners. They didn't care about absorbing all the information. They didn't love technology or programming. They wanted the bare minimum and a diploma so they could get a job that paid the big bucks. It wasn't a secret or anything. They would proudly tell you that. It's perfectly fine to be in it only for the money. It was just disappointing to me. As someone who was really hoping to meet people who were passionate about the skill itself. There were a couple, but they were few and far between. The rest wanted a frictionless route to a six-figure salary, and they saw ChatGPT in this program as the ticket there. But I think the fear got to them as well. All of these new AIs popping up, all of these tech companies laying off thousands of people, and the simple fact that the course was tough. Too tough, even for a cheater. At a certain point, their tactics stopped working, and what foundation they had left wasn't strong enough to build from. Many dropped out long before the term ended. I hope the best for this technology moving forward. I want to see it move in the direction of helping artists and programmers, not replacing them or turning them into AI babysitters. There's so much potential there. I've seen it. I want to see it continue to benefit the people who believe in that joy of the process, who feel that joy, and who treasure it dearly. And when that happens, I will gladly pick up these tools again. Ciao for now.